Kia ora, good evening. Good news for Kākāpō recovery. One of the eggs laid this season has hatched on Whanuaho Codfish Island. Lisa, one of the female Kākāpō incubating eggs on the island, has had success with an egg that had required repair by Kākāpō recovery staff after being damaged. This fluffy, latest addition to the threatened species lifts the Kākāpō population from 124 to 125, still a long way from being removed from the endangered species list. Controls around the viewing of great white sharks are being introduced to bring them in line with other tourism operators who offer viewing of whale, dolphin and seals. Conservation Minister Nick Smith has announced the introduction of permits to view great white sharks following meetings with tourism operators and concerned divers on Stewart Island. Tourism operators offer cage viewing off the boat using burley to attract great whites in Fovo Strait and divers have expressed concern the practice may change shark behaviour, causing them to expect food around boats and putting divers at greater risk of attack. The Department of Conservation who regulates boats viewing dolphins, whales and seals will consult on permit conditions and will notify operators of permit requirements under the Wildlife Act. The weekend's inclement weather did little to dampen the enthusiasm at this year's Cancer Society Relay for Life at Rugby Park. All three southern mayors were on site to get Relay for Life 2014 underway Saturday, cutting the ribbon before cancer survivors completed the first lap to make the start of the fundraiser official. With one in three being directly affected in their lifetime, there's few people whose lives are not touched by cancer. I don't think there would be anyone in New Zealand that hasn't touched. Certainly in the crowd here today, I've seen a number of people that I know. A good friend of mine here is today as a survivor. It's, um, it's good to see it, you know, the money going to the, a good cause. One in three people will get some sort of cancer diagnosis at some stage in their lives. And clearly, if that many people are getting a diagnosis, whether that's just a skin cancer that can be burned off or whether it's something more serious, it, means that it does impact on all of us at some stage uh, because it might be our brother or our sister or our son of law, obviously, so it impacts on all of us at some point. Two MPs from different sides of the debating chamber sharing at least one thing in common, their battles with cancer. National MP for Invercargill, Eric Roy in 1997 and Labour's MP for Te Tai Tonga, Rio Terakatni in 2008. 1997, uh, they kind of wrote me off in a lot of ways, put your affairs in order. I had pretty serious lymphoma lumps the size of footballs inside me and uh, inoperable. And that's history. So, yeah, it brings back a whole rush of memories. And I think the, the big thing is it really stamps what a community can do in supporting each other. And that support is absolutely crucial to the feeling of well-being you need to beat the thing. Yes, uh, at a young age, no one really thinks that they can, you know, confronting your mortality. I mean, so you, you go through a lot of different um, spaces, I suppose, as a person. But I think um, really what, what, what helped me through was just um, the, all the wonderful people that helped me along the way. And the Cancer Society were right there for me uh, in Wellington. Uh, and uh, likewise, just everybody, everybody's love and support. The event is about fundraising, but that's far from the only reason for Relay for Life. The most important thing about this event is that the community comes together and works with the Cancer Society. Yes, there is a fundraising component to it. The great thing is that all of the funds raised at this event stay here, so it stays in Southland, which is really important, and I think that's important to the people who are raising the funding, knowing that it's going to go towards helping excuse me, people in their community. Money's important because the money allows you to do a whole lot of things you can't do without money. That's important. But so much of the cancer fight is about inner well-being, feeling, sense of community, and that's what probably the primary thing here really. It just is we can beat this thing, we can work together as a community, and it just sort of lifts the spirits. It's so crucial. Was there a different Eric Roy that emerged at the end of that fight? Oh no, well I'm slightly altered. I, I think for me, I sort of had to, the way I kind of explain it is you've got to stand on the cliff to see the view, and so a whole lot of things come into a focus that you didn't have before, principally what family and friends can really mean to you, and that's a way that, you know, you've really got to experience that, to see that. Um, apart from that, I think you kind of just feel every day kind of precious and you value it more and you kind of spend some time thinking well have I spent my time this last month to best advantage. 
Next year, the Otago Southland edition of Relay for Life is to be held in Dunedin with the event back in Southland in 2016. Hunter Andrews, South Today News. And with money still coming in, Relay for Life organisers have reported that in excess of $120,000 was raised at this year's event. And while at Re Relay for Life, Hunter Andrews took the opportunity to ask Eric Roy about the newly nominated national candidate for the seat of Invercargill, Sarah Dowie. She's been on the National Party executive for quite a while, so I've got to know Sarah quite well. She's uh, certainly a very passionate person and uh, really committed to see South and go and this is how she wants to express that so I think uh, she'll put her shoulder to the wheel and really make a showing. And what will you be doing because she doesn't have that huge profile that's obviously what she yeah, has well, to she, acquire in the next few months. And she knows that she knows she's got to get name recognition and do all the things that good candidates do and you know it's I had a wee chat with her last night or she initiated it and so we'll uh, we'll have a talk about how she can do that over the next wee while. You have a wealth of knowledge that you can share. Well, yes, but I'm not forcing it on. She's not me. She's Sarah Dowie, and uh, she's got to um, make her own name in her own way. And she can bounce things off me, but I'm not going to tell her what to do. And South Today News will profile the new national candidate in tomorrow's bulletin. Stay with us after the break. The oyster season's open and the Minister of Conservation announces three new marine reserves in the sub-Antarctic. Welcome back. Three new marine reserves have now been formally established in the sub-Antarctic Islands. 435,000 hectares of ocean surrounding the Antipodes, Bounty and Campbell Islands now has marine reserve status, meaning fishing, mining, petroleum, exploration or marine farming can no longer take place in these waters. The title ensures the protection of the diverse wildlife and species on the islands, including the southern royal albatross, several penguin varieties, giant spider crabs and the white-footed power. New Zealand has 37 marine reserves and the area surrounding the sub-Antarctic islands is 13 times larger than all the reserves on New Zealand's three main islands. The oyster season is underway with the first oysters going on sale early Saturday afternoon. Hunter Andrews asked Barnes oyster manager Graham Wright about oystering conditions in Fovo Strait on Saturday morning. Well, the boys said it was a bit sort of bumpy earlier on but it sort of settled down and they had a pretty good night's fishing I think, yeah. So they left the harbour at midnight bang on uh, or they were waiting yeah, out I there? Think, um, th yeah, the, you're allowed to fish at sort of uh, at midnight or one minute past twelve so some of the boats stepped away sort of half past ten, eleven o'clock, yeah, so they're, out, they're ready to go. What did the stocks look like? You've obviously tested for bone amia. Uh, we had some pre-season testing going on as we do every year and um, yeah, the, the results aren't back from that yet, they do a lot of lab testing but um, things are looking pretty good, yeah. Bit of an amy there still, but I think it's it's forever present in the fisheries. One of the things we have to live with. And the oysters look pretty good. Have you had a chance to sample? Uh, yes, I've had two or three this morning as the first the truck arrived. And um, but you know they're tasting pretty good. And how about the price? Everyone wants to know the price. Uh, price just we've had the price the same as the last two years. So um, yeah, so the price hasn't moved. So we just we just keep things ticking away. And that, what is that for a dozen? Uh, at my retail shop at, in the cargo, it's twenty three dollars a dozen. Do you have any idea what price they reach by the time they get to Auckland? Um, oh, it varies a little bit. I think, um, you know, if you're depending on some of the, you know, the more uh, expensive restaurants, they can be fifty or sixty dollars. I think, yeah. But um, I'm not sure what the supermarkets about the same sort of pricing probably. Uh, and you will expect a queue. There's usually a queue before the shop opens. Yeah, we've been telling everybody the shop doesn't open until two o'clock to sort of buy ourselves a bit of time. But um, but yeah, it'll it'll start building up pretty shortly. I think, yeah. And uh, so you've had no problems finding staff. No, staffing's been really good actually. Um, so as, as the industry sort of has been rebuilding and regrowing, we seem to be able to you know, getting some you know, the older staff. Uh, well, the staff have been here for a while. The senior staff keep coming back. It's, um, and some new people keen to learn the industry, which is good. And how many dozen would you put away over a season? Oh, not that many. <laughs> I probably had a dozen today, but yeah, not not too many. And how do you like them best? Oh, uh, straight out of the shell is definitely a preference, but um, yeah, I like them anyway, really cooked or uh, just as they come. At the moment, I'm buying some and taking them back to Methman. You're the, one of the first through the door. You, as, you always try and get here as early as you can? Oh, yes, yeah, for sure, yeah. Really, it was more uh, by accident than anything that I'm here at the moment, but uh, apart from that, yes. And you'll moment. be sharing them with people up north? Uh, if they're lucky. Only if they're lucky. What do you think about the price? What's the cheapest think, you remember I, them? I think the price is very good. They uh, used to be very cheap years ago, but uh, everything has gone up. What's the cheapest you recall? Uh, about $12 a dozen. 
Southlands around the mountain cycle trails received a welcome monetary boost with additional funding confirmed by Prime Minister and Tourism Minister John Key. Up to half a million dollars in additional funding has been allocated to enable Southland District Council to finalise construction of the 81 kilometre Stage 1 stretch which runs from Kingston to Walter Peak by May. Several sections are already complete and tenders are out for the building of bridges to link finished sections. John Key also announced a further $80 million worth of maintenance funding over four years for the New Zealand Cycle Trail Great Rides. Funding will be allocated in Budget 2014 on May 15th. The 2014 Invercargill AMP show at Donovan Park is being heralded a success with around 7,000 through the gate on Saturday despite a busy southern weekend and patchy weather. Hunter Andrews spoke to Invercargill AMP Association President Graham Calder. Uh, it's been a very successful day, there's been a good crowd and uh, I think everyone seems to have enjoyed the time at the show this year. As their uh, entr entries up, is it, is it as popular as always? Uh, yes, it's as popular as it has been. Uh, we certainly haven't got the number of entries that we had years ago, but for nowadays it's, uh, we're very pleased with the entries we've received. And there's a lot on this weekend? Yes, no there is, and so we're very pleased to see the uh, crowd that has come to support us. And also great for the kids and families, isn't it? Yes, there's a lot of family entertainment. Uh, the Dogmatic Show, it was, I think, perhaps one of the highlights this year. And uh, when they were performing, there was always a good crowd of people there watching. And that was a pretty healthily stocked Grand Parade. Yes, yeah, no, once again, uh, the best of the Southern livestock was there and it was well received by those who attended. How much business is done here by breeders? Is this a chance for them to show off their stock? Uh, yes, it is. Uh, perhaps not so much uh, in the, amongst the commercial men, but uh, it's certainly an opportunity for the stud breeders to show uh, their stock and how they are breeding nowadays. And some pretty good looking beasts out there. Yes, yeah, no, we're uh, once again south and rose to the occasion and brought some very good animals out. Hundreds of athletes hit the banks of the Waihopai River yesterday for the 11th annual Wai Try. For the first time, Sports Southland ran the event, which had over 250 competitors involved, with around 100 entries on the day. Those who took part were mostly individual athletes, although there were team options available for the duathlon event. This year, the kayak league was withdrawn, with athletes instead having the option to combine walking, running and biking over distances from 3.6 kilometres to 30 kilometres. Sports Southland we're pleased with the level of participation given the number of events on in the city over the weekend and weather conditions. Next up on sport, post-match reaction from the Highlanders' close loss to defending champions at the weekend. From the news team though, it's good night.